a great feast today, Pentecost. There's Christmas, Easter, Pentecost. Christmas looks towards Easter, Pentecost flows from Easter. But these are the big three, Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. And Pentecost, which we keep today, Whitson, Whit Sunday, is an end, in a, in a way, and a beginning. It's an end and a beginning. And confirmation, the sacrament of confirmation, the gift of the Holy Spirit, is in a way an end, and in another way, more importantly perhaps, a beginning. So how is Pentecost an end? Well, it's the end of the 50 days of Eastertide. And so at the end of today, we will say goodbye to the Paschal candle. Uh, we will go back to the green time, okay, ordinary time for the rest of the year. But Pentecost is an end, or it's a completion, a fulfillment in another way, because God has given himself fully now. He, the Father, sends his son. His son is born, Christmas. He dies and he rises, Easter. And now, to complete that, the Father and the Son, the Father <clears throat> through the Son, sends the Holy Spirit. Now, on the 25th of this month, as we know, this beautiful new legislation about data protection comes into force. And God has not protected his data. That's the point. God has uh, given himself fully. He has revealed himself as one and three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, he has, shall we say, filled every dimension of our life. As Father, we can put it like this, he is above us as the Son, as Jesus Christ. He is beside us as the Holy Spirit. He is within us. So all the dimensions of our life are filled by God. He is our creator. He is our redeemer. He is our sanctifier. He is before us. He is with us now in the present, and he is our future. So past, present, and future are filled with this wonderful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's to give us extra time to take that on board that next Sunday, we have the feast of the Holy Trinity to recognize what it is that God has given us. He has opened the doors of his house to us. And faith is our passport. Faith is our visa, if you like. We can enter in to this great country, this infinite country of God. And confirmation, too, is a kind of end is a kind of completion, a kind of fulfillment, is it not? Because those who are being confirmed, you hear, you have already been baptized, you have made your first confessions, and uh, let us hope some other ones as well. You have made your first Holy Communion, and again, other ones as well. And now, to complete that, you are anointed and sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. You are sealed. Uh, perhaps we could say it's like, you know, you prepare a nice cake or a nice pudding or something, then you have to pour the cream on it. That's the final, the final thing. And so there is the cream of chrism, or, you know, you, you, you have to polish your shoes. Okay, uh, that this is, this is the final polish. Three sacraments make the Christian. Baptism, confirmation, and Holy Communion. By means of these, we are initiated into the mystery of Christ. We become full members of the church. And there's only one thing left for us to do, and that is be saints. 
be saints, live out this exuberant grace that God has given us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have no excuse once we have been baptized and confirmed and, and <clears throat> are receiving the Blessed Sacrament not to be saints. So, this is a completion, but you see, it is also a beginning. So, St. John Paul II said that the Sacrament of Confirmation is a personal Pentecost, personal Pentecost. What happened to the Apostles, what happened to our Blessed Lady and the other first Christians happens to us when we are confirmed, a personal Pentecost for the whole of life. So Pentecost was a beginning. The, it's, we call it the birthday of the church. The wind blew, so the ship, the ship of the Christian community was launched into the sea of history, let us say, and began to sail forth. The, the tongues of fire came, and the fire was lit, which was to, and is to fill the whole world. This is the day the proclamation of the gospel began. This is the day when people heard the gospel in other languages, when it went out just from the, the chosen people, from the Jewish people, and began to spread throughout the whole world. And so it is with the sacrament of confirmation. It's not an end. It is a beginning. It is the same gift of the Holy Spirit. It's like really, uh, you know, you've taken possession of a new car and today you are given the keys to drive the car. You're given the keys of the car to drive it. A personal Pentecost for the whole of life. We receive this wonderful free download of the Holy Spirit in the smartphone of ourselves, let's say. We receive this free download and seven free apps, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, these gifts, what are, what are gifts for? They're meant to be used. They're, you know, we don't just keep them wrapped up in, in a piece of paper or we never, no, we have to click on them. You know, in a way, our, our men is like our click on them, but then we have to use them. We are, we are resourced to do things. And so we come back to the same thing. What are we called to do? We are called, surely, to be saints, to be holy. But this is the beginning of our confirmation, is our, the beginning of our share in the mission of the church. It's our, we become ourselves proclaimers of the gospel, like the apostles. We can even speak in foreign languages. Now, in this sense, in this sense, I'm afraid if we want to learn, I don't know, um, Uzbek, uh, we have to, you know, study Uzbek. I'm afraid it doesn't just come uh, into our minds without any effort. But we are enabled to communicate. What does it mean to speak in foreign languages? To communicate with people who are different from ourselves. We are enabled to enter into contact, into friendship, into communion with, with other people in Christ. And so the unity of the church is built up. But so, well, this is what uh, Pope Francis said says, and this is, I think, fitting for this sacrament. Do not be afraid to set your sights higher, to allow yourself to be loved and liberated by God. Do not be afraid to let yourself be guided by the Holy Spirit. Holiness does not make you less human, because it is an encounter between your weakness and the power of God's grace. For in the words of Léon Blois, when all is said and done, the only great tragedy in life is not to become a saint. Yes, when we are dying, that's it. The only great tragedy in life 
is not to become a saint. So here's, you know, here's my vision, if you like, the saints of Aberdeen. Why not? Why not? Holy young people who become saintly, holy husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, priests, perhaps, religious sisters or brothers, perhaps, engineers, businessmen, artists, scientists, whatever, whatever, lay people fulfilling their mission in the world, but holy because filled with the Holy Spirit of God and Christ-like, because that is our vocation, to be Christ in the world. And so the Pope says, let us ask the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us a fervent longing to be saints for God's greater glory, and let us encourage one another in this effort. Great encouragement here. So many of us here. Let us encourage one another in this effort. In this way, we will share a happiness that the world will not ever take away from us.